Here is a successful fashion model who talks about what she went through. Let's just read what she had to say. Her name was Laura Cross Kallenberg. A successful fashion model discusses the pitfalls of building a life on physical appearance rather than inner beauty. She said, being on the covers of top European fashion magazines was no longer a dream for me but reality. I could hardly believe it. All I ever wanted was to be in magazines, earn lots of money and travel all the world. The struggle to make ends meet with final over, were, 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 was finally over. Now I could wine and dine in Paris, my new home and toast fame and fortune. Taste, um, fame and fortune. After all, isn't that what life is all about? She said, what is your idea of beauty? She said to herself. What would you change about yourself if you could? When I began my career with Christian Dior in Paris at age 19, my idea of beauty was what others thought about me. If people approved of me and wanted to book me for a modeling job, then I concluded that I must be pretty. My logic was that if I was successful in working, in working then I must be beautiful. It was a dangerous thought pattern because I was placing my self-esteem in the hands of others and what they thought about me. Another way that I determined beauty was by association. I was working with some of the most beautiful women in the world who were appearing in the most popular magazines. Since they were my friends and peers, then I thought, surely I just must be beautiful. Another way I assured myself was by the men I attracted. Since I had lots of handsome, intelligent, successful men pursuing me, I thought I was beautiful. I was popular and had a lot of friends too. And as my success grew and people recognized me, it was very easy to get invited to all kinds of parties and go wherever I wanted. So I must be beautiful if I have all these friends and get to go to all these places. As a result, I became an, ego an egotistical, self-centered person living a very self-centered life. Most of my time was spent on me and being concerned about myself. Me, myself and I were my three favorite words. My entire life was focused on my physical appearance, my weight and my hair and my clothing and my overall attractiveness. I once was, one, I once was on a two-month modeling job in Japan. Every day people were assigned to do everything for me, even tie my shoes. When I got dressed, there was someone to hold my dress and coat. They had three people to do one person's job. It all fed my self-centeredness and feeling of self-importance. I also became a workaholic. I worked seven days a week because I knew nothing was guaranteed. I could be out of work the next day. My looks could be gone any time, so I had to take every job. I would work in Germany during the day and then fly to Paris in the evening to work and then go back to Germany in the morning. I was afraid of losing it all and had to hold on to it at any cost. So I would take any and every job I could. The result was that I became exhausted and sick. I fainted one day in the middle of a shoot and injured my knee. I was laid up in bed for the first time in my career. Not being able to work was the most frightening experience I'd ever had because even if it was for only two weeks, it meant I was missing all the fashion shows that I'd just been fitted for. I had to cancel 14 shows. I was crushed. But one day as I lay there, bedridden and unable to work, I began to reflect on my life and question my values and ideas about beauty and what kind of person I had become within. I realized that my views of beauty were inadequate. I knew, for example, that my looks were going to change. My covers and my tear sheets, my pictures that I tear out of magazines, became out of date very quickly. I had worked so hard to get those photos in magazines and my agency wanted to take them out of my portfolio within six months because everything was out of style. I was constantly trying to keep up. I also discovered that making a lot of money at a young age was great, but I found that the responsibility of managing it was overwhelming. It also made me question why people were really attracted to me. If I looked different or did something different or had less money, would my boyfriend, she had a boyfriend, right, still love me for who I am? All these questions and doubts were hitting me when I was still at the peak of my career. I realized the shallowness of it all and began to feel very empty inside. After acquiring all I thought I wanted, I realized something was still missing. All the success and attention I received didn't feel the emptiness I felt deep within. What had happened? Where were my priorities? Who or what was I living for? And she kept on going and she says, insecurity is not beautiful. It makes it difficult to have, um, to be, it, makes it, it makes it difficult to have and be a friend. And you put a lot of expectations on others to compliment you and make you feel good. She said, related also to what was my habit of comparing myself with the looks of other women was jealousy, 
Jealousy is another problem I've had to work on. I've had to learn to be secure in who and what I am and how God has made me. So she started to know who God is. Knowing that He loves me no matter what I look like or how I act as long as my actions were pleasing to Him. So this is what a famous model said. She's no longer a famous model as you have realized. This is the life of the models out there. So don't take them as your role models. Sisters and brothers, Islam forces people to accept the features which Allah created you with by f- because you are beautiful. So it made certain commandments and prohibitions that some people find harsh. Yet, when we analyze and compare it to the problems and psychological problems that people are having about their beauty, we find that Allah needed to force this upon us so that we never fall into psychological problems. For example, it's unacceptable in Islam, it's haram for anybody to say, I am ugly. Guys, I mean, how boring would the world be if everybody looked alike, really? You know, think about it. Alhamdulillah, beauty is, is different. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said that the fitrah which He's created you on, you're not allowed to change that. It's haram to change that. This is also why hijab has been ordained upon every woman. Every woman. Have you thought about that? Whether you think you're attractive or not attractive, whether you think you're young or too old, you still have to wear hijab because in Allah's eyes you can still be attractive to any man. So what are you worried about? Your hijab is there to make you feel and know that you have a beauty which you need to not allow men to be attracted to in a wrong way and to give you your rights. Hijab makes you feel that. Think about it the other way, sisters. Don't always think about it that you're being impressed. This is what the West wants you to think. And unless you're really old, Islam, like really old, I'm talking about, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, women who no longer have the sexual desire anymore, like they're 70, 80 years old, He said, You can loosen your hijab a little bit. Everyone else, every other woman, is unconditionally attractive, no matter what you say. Islam also forbid the plucking of eyebrows, tattooing, making gaps between your teeth unnecessarily, hair extensions to accept, so, so, so that you can accept that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you beautiful. Obviously, if there are deformities in your body, Allah has allowed you to change them so that you can look normal or even to seek um, surgery, plastic surgery, if it means that you have been, you know, you have a deformity.